as you Chris. Good afternoon, everyone, from coast to coast. This is the game we have been waiting for, Canada's second ever in World Cup competition. Canada in red against the Hungarians in white. And Graham Leggett, very quickly, let's talk about those two major changes in the Canadian lineup. The big change is that Tony Waiters has gone with experience and put Gino Lettieri in goal. In midfield, Jerry Gray has recovered from a hamstring injury and replaces Mike Sweeney. What about the changes in the Hungarian lineup uh, from that Soviet game, which they lost six to nothing? Not unexpected, they've made a change in goal. Sandry replaces Distel, and Varga and Gursa replace Peter and Roth. It's a beautiful afternoon here in Irapuato. Temperature in the high 20s Celsius. Not a cloud in the sky as Canada plays this very important, crucial game in the opening round of World Cup 86. Crucial in the sense that if Canada wants to go through to the second round, they really have to get a positive result here against the Hungarians this afternoon. And that means either a tie or a win. Preferably a win as far as Tony Waiters and the Canadian team are concerned. There you see the starting lineup for Canada or the starting goalkeeper, Tino Lettieri. A long kick finds the head of Igor Vravlitz. Carl Valentine is there and stopped by the Hungarian defender. Randy Samuel marking well. He had a great game for Canada against France. Very strong in the back four. One thing we must do is put the 6-0 result out of our minds. This Hungarian team were badly outclassed against the Soviets, but this is another day. They've got a lot of fright, and they'd like nothing better than to whip Canada and reverse that decision. Vitari with the long cross looking for number seven, Kiprich of Hungary. He's being watched by Wilson. It goes off the leg. There's the shot. They score. Hungary has scored a quick goal to take a 1 0 lead against Canada. And Esther Hazi gets this goal. Just watch the build up off Daniel's foot, deflects back Dino Lettieri. And that's the start that Canada did not want. There he comes in at the far post. Lettieri a little hesitant in getting over there, but in fairness, the ball did deflect off Randy Samuel. We apologize for the technical difficulties that you may be experiencing uh, along the network. Uh, we hope that we can straighten them out, and we will have pictures for you throughout the game. Hungary with a quick goal to take a 1-0 lead against Canada. And we will show you that goal as quickly as we can. The Hungarians striking quickly, just like the Soviets did against Hungary in a 6-0 win. Catching the Canadian back four, napping, and jumping on the opportunity to put it behind Tino Lettieri. David Norman with the throw-in to Vrablic. Graham, let's take a look at that goal again. Well, unlucky for Randy Samuels. He gets just a touch to this and deflects it past his own goalkeeper. That's the start Canada did not want. They wanted to keep this Hungarian team off the scoreboard as long as they can. So we're back now live to Irapuato. Canada in the red against the Hungarians in the white. The Hungarians with a 1-0 lead. We play just over three and a half minutes of the opening half. The one thing the Canadian team will not lack here this afternoon is Canadian support. Hundreds of Canadian fans have made the trip down to catch this all-important game in Group C of World Cup 86. They come from all over, but the bulk of them from Vancouver and places in Ontario. This is Randy Samuel, plays it for Bob Lanaduzzi. Lanaduzzi ahead to Paul James. James. Chips it forward, hoping that Ravlitz can get to it. He does get a touch on it. Now he's in a foot race with Garaba, and Garaba wins it. Plays it for Cardo, number five. Four minutes and 20 seconds gone in the opening half. Hungary leading 1-0. That was the kind of start that Tony Waiters did not want for his Canadian team. He would have much preferred the kind of start they had against France when they held France off the scoreboard until the second half. One significant tactical change in this Hungarian team, the big skipper, number eight, Nagy, instead of playing in midfield as he did against the Soviets, is playing way back as a sweeper. 
This is Hungary's ninth appearance in the World Cup. Their best ever finish was second in 38 and again in 54 when Hungarians were a definite force in the world of soccer. Of course, this is Canada's first ever appearance. We started qualifying for the World Cup 28 years ago. And finally, a Canadian team gets through. The referee for today's game is Al Shadi from Syria. His linesmen are Petrovic from Yugoslavia and Bambridge from Australia. Free kick awarded to Canada. Bruce Wilson, who is earning his 55th cap as a member of the Canadian team, takes it, finds Valentine. Valentine has David Norman supporting him. Valentine tries to get by one man, camp, and the Hungarians come away with it. Ditari. Wilson does well to get that ball back to Tino Lettieri. Lettieri throws it out to Bob Lenarduzzi. Tries to find Valentine, but can't. This is Randy Reagan. Does find Bradley. Ravlich gets tied up amongst three white shirts and is a little bit too aggressive in trying to get to the ball. Burksa, number 17 for Hungary. Plays it for big number eight, Noji, the Hungarian captain, and he goes back to the keeper, Joseph Zendry, who replaced Distel after that disappointing 6 nothing loss for the Hungarians against the Soviets. Bob Lenarduzzi just lets that go all the way almost to the line where Tino Lattieri knocks it forward for Lenarduzzi, one of four soccer-playing brothers in Vancouver. Of course, Sam Lenarduzzi now part of our commentating team in Mexico City. Play blown down and a free kick awarded to the Hungarians. Graham, I'd have to say the Canadian fans far outnumber the Hungarian fans in attendance here this afternoon in Irapuato. The support here for Canada is marvelous. The red and white flags are everywhere. One thing I'd like to say about this ground, it's painted white. Concrete, there's lots of white shirts about, and the glare from the sun really reflects. It's very difficult to pick the ball up when it's in the air. David Norman for Randy Samuel. Randy, long ball, looking for Valentine, headed away by the Hungarian defender, but right to Jerry Gray, who plays it to Bob Lenarduzzi, back to Gray, who did not play in the game against France because of a hamstring pull. Lenarduzzi chips it forward, hoping to find a red shirt in the six-yard box, but unable to do so. Joseph Varga has it go off his uh, leg, but they award the throw in to the Hungarian. If you've just joined us, I'm Steve Armitage, along with Graham Leggett, and we're live from coast to coast in Canada from Irapuato, Mexico, where Canada is playing its second game ever in World Cup competition against the Hungarians, and Canada is trailing 1-0 on an early goal. A bit of a miscue in the Canadian back four. It was a costly miscue. This is David Norman. Another throw in to the Hungarians. Eight and a half minutes gone. This is Noji, the captain. Long ball down the left side looking for Varga. Perfect placement. Chip into the middle. Finds the head of Randy Samuel. He's a tower when he goes up. Dalai tries to find Kiprich. That is knocked forward. Cardo selecting to go back to the keeper. Joseph Zendry. You can see on your picture the nice green field. Last night in Irapuato, there was a big, big thunderstorm. The field is very heavy, very lush, and will be certainly strength sapping. This will be a very tough team performance for Canada to hold these Hungarians in these conditions. Ian Bridge just lets it go over his head and into the arms of Tino, who then rolls it out to Lenarduzzi. Canada and Hungary have met three times in the past. In 1974, a one-all tie in Budapest. August 6th of 1975 in Toronto, Hungary defeated uh, Canada 4-1. to one. And on August the 10th of that same year in Montreal, it was the Hungarian 3, Canada 2. So the best Canada has been able to do is a one-all tie against the Hungarians, and that coming in Budapest. 
Bridge to Lana Duzzi. Lana Duzzi finds Valentine unable to control it, and the Hungarians go back to their keeper. Pace a little slow, but that's to be expected in the heat and the altitude of Irapuato. The altitude here is 1,725 meters. Not as high as Mexico City, but it certainly is a sapping type of altitude. You run for 25, 30 meters, and it's recovery rate that presents the players with the problem. Bridge, who plays in a league in Switzerland to national team member Randy Samuel, who makes his home in Vancouver, native of Trinidad. Bridge back to Tino Lettieri. Throw to Bob Lanaduzzi. Lanaduzzi gets by Dutari, but the ball goes into touch. Lanaduzzi will take the throw in. Make that a free kick. Almost 11 and a half minutes gone in the opening half here in the Irapuato. Hungary one, Canada nothing. Bruce Wilson has David Norman making a run, but the ball went off of Salai. Free kick to Canada. Igor Vrablich goes over to the far post. Ian Bridge is coming up in support to lend some height on the far post. Let's see what Bruce Wilson does with this. Wilson to the far post, looking for Bridge. Bridge unable to get ahead on it. Paul James racing after it. Back to Bob Lenaduzzi. To Jerry Gray. They work the give and go. Now James running into the corner, unable to control the ball, and therefore unable to get the cross in. And just a little over the level there, the play by Canada. Gary Gray would have been better advised to cross it himself. All he did was put the ball to James, asking him to cross it, but the ball ran past James into touch. James can't get by number four, Joseph Varga. Throw into Canada. Our broadcast location here in Irapuato, about 25 yards from the field, and we're only about 25 feet up. Graham's got a great big net hoping to catch one of these Adidas Azteca balls. Wilson. Looking for Vrablich, but it was too long. And that's one of the dangers in altitude uh, with this ball. The ball has a tendency to take off and fly on you. It doesn't behave the same way as it would at sea level. Berksa trying to find Kiprich, but unable to click on the play. Randy Samuel to bridge. Lana Duzzi, lots of space. 13 minutes gone in the opening half. Hungary one, Canada no score. Long ball down the right side. Talked to Tony Waiters before the game, and uh, he was uh, quietly optimistic that they could get the results that they wanted against the Hungarians. He said the attitude amongst the team was very good. They'd had two very, very productive training sessions since their one nothing loss to France in the opening game. And he was looking forward to this game against Hungary very much. Lanaduzzi has it go off his head into touch. Throw into Hungary. Estrahazi, number 11, over there to take it for the Hungarians. He leaves it for Varga. Varga, back to the captain, Noji. Spelt N-A-G-Y, but pronounced Nuji. This is Carl Valentine. James making a run through the middle, but Valentine unable to get the return pass in. It seems like stating the obvious, but if Canada wants to get a result from this game, they will have to score the first ever World Cup goal. And if they do, they will likely cost the bookmakers in England quite a bit of money. They were laying odds of up to 75 to 1 that Canada would not score a goal in this tournament. And they have three games in which to do it if they don't get by to the second round, of course. Upcoming game against the Soviets on Monday. And this game against Hungary. Long throw-in taken by Lanaduzzi. 
headed away by Cardo and then cleared by the Hungarian defenders. Ian Bridge watching it roll into touch. Canada will 1,000 to 1, according to the bookmaker, to uh, win World Cup 86. Long ball from Samuel. Doesn't find its target. Salai working against David Norman. In the middle for Noji. Noji forced to go back to Cardos. Cardos for Farga. Farga, long ball down the right side, hoping that Kieferich can run to it. Kieferich battling against Wilson. Kieferich back to Salai. In the middle for Noji. Noji challenged by Igor Bradley, and he gets it. Coverage of the Labatt World Cup TV Series continues in a moment. Ah, uh, that's my kind of beer. Hey, what's up, Doc? I told you Labatt Light doesn't taste like water. Its original recipe gives you 100% great beer taste, nothing less. Now, Doc, when did you become a doctor? <laughs> People lose their hair worrying about finding a light beer with taste, and that me, Labatt Light, doesn't taste like water. Its original recipe gives you 100% great beer taste, nothing less. Gee, you're pretty bright, Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Why McDonald's McDLT is so good? Lettuce, onions, pickles, real cool, all the taste you love to crunch. And your McDLT is 100% pure beef, the taste you want so much. And then we add tomato, mayo, processed cheese. To make one amazing piece from McDLT. It's too far on the meat, that's McDLT. McDLT is how McDonald's makes lettuce and tomato things. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Welcome back to Aeropuerto. Free kick to Canada, and it's headed away by Noji. But Gray keeps the pressure on. The flag goes up to the offside, so anything in Canada might have been able to work there, I don't think it's uh, been allowed because of the offside flag. And the referee allowed the advantage there. Hungary had the ball, let them bring it out. Hungary leading Canada 1-0 on an early goal. But after that goal, Canada settled down, and really they have had the better of the play in terms of uh, distribution in the Hungarian half. This is number 19, Bognar, being watched by Bridge. Jerry Gray to Bridge. Back to Gray. Gray with a nice little ball on the left side for David Norman. David Norman working against Salai. Norman going down to the line, unable to reach it. And the referee indicates the corner kick to Canada. And Canada brings up all the big defensemen. Leonard Dozy at the near post. Samuel and Bridge at the far post. Now, if this set piece is working properly, you'll see Jerry Gray take the corner and aim for the head of Bob Leonard Uzi, who will then try to flick it on to Ian Bridge. It paid off in a goal in several games in the qualifying round. Let's see if they work it again. Gray, again, looking for Leonard Uzi. There's a shot from David Norman. Randy Samuel couldn't turn and get the shot away. Once again, Canada caught offside. The Hungarian defense, when the ball is cleared, coming up as one man, leaving the red shirts in behind. The flag goes up every time. Canadian forwards will have to come out a little sharper to prevent these offsides. Bruce Wilson to Jerry Gray. Valentine. Off the head of David Norman in the touch. Just over 19 minutes gone now. From Irapuato. Hungary leading Canada by a score of 1-0. 